I'm normally fine to watch things by myself, like scary things. Yeah. Um, but because everybody was asleep and it was dark and I had my headphones on. And so all of the whispering yeah. was in my ears. Yeah. And I was like, I don't like that. So I finished the last 20 minutes this morning. Plus there's a lot of whispering in the episode too. So, or, and headphones. Wasn't a fan. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is why I'm watching Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, Season 1, Episode 8. The Murmuring. I really liked this one. Yay! Um, I did, too. I think it might have been my favorite of the of the. Well, eight. So I started to... In my head, I started planning what I was going to say, and I was like, I think it might be my favorite. And I was like, but I really liked two, and I really liked one, and I really liked three, and I liked four. And They're all and basically, good. Basically, I liked all of them yeah. except for the viewing. <laughs> yeah. They're all good, for certainly for what they are, but I think this is the type of horror that I... This connect with two and very the haunting yeah. of blank house so it's jennifer kent who directed the babadook and it's essie davis who was the lead in the babadook very so. beautiful she's got such a cool face there's a she i really appreciated several elements of this episode in the series in general but i thought it was a very gentle very beautiful episode i think it's interesting seeing um seeing leads of a certain age sure. and seeing romance depicted between yeah. people of a certain age. You don't see that a lot. Um, it's the story of this uh, saint of a man, Edgar, and his horrible wife. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because Will was saying the same thing. And I was like, if he'd put his dick away for five <laughs> seconds, maybe they'd get somewhere. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I am mostly kidding. <laughs> she was a little trying, but <laughs> they lost a baby. <laughs> well, and, and that's I, 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 I really appreciated the craft of the storytelling because they they endear us immediately to her yeah. and thus him mm -hmm. because you really get that she loves these fucking birds. <laughs> <laughs> what are they I'm, called? Dunlins, was, I think. Yeah. Which are types of starlins. Starlings. That travel in murmurings. Murmurations. <laughs> we, we were in a group hopper place for like five minutes. That, all of those words are real. <laughs> but anyways, shit. It's what it's another one of my favorite things is I love when like just nerds yeah. get five minutes to talk about the thing that they love. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> And so she was talking about these birds, and uh, another thing I think was interesting about the series is not one, I don't think, was modern day. No. Also, if you want to hear nerds talk for more than five minutes about things they like, I have a Buffy podcast, too. <laughs> so anyways, as I was saying, we we are properly endeared to her and then him, him being Andrew Lincoln, yeah. uh, who is not getting uglier. He's not getting uglier, and also, though, I would love for him to have one project where he just has a good day. <laughs> Where he just like has a nice, like he goes for ice cream. <laughs> well, they so they were they like had sort of like a society or something and patrons and, and they one might even call it an ornithological society. <laughs> ornithological society. Oh, you're Ornith switching. <laughs> Regardless, they bought him a fancy camera, yeah. and so they went somewhere north to seemingly film hours upon hours of so, footage of these goddamn birds. <laughs> what I was assuming is that it's like, this This was relatively early in this like kind of study or whatever, mm -hmm. of specifically these murmurations, but I think they were trying to... I think they were doing it so much because they were trying to find patterns mm. in their behavior. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, it was too much. <laughs> Way too much. Uh, and we did get that they had suffered a loss and I appreciated that because it was sort of like, well, what does that mean? And you go to a place and it ultimately ends up being exactly what yeah. you think. However, I was not, I, it was, that was not a mystery to me. Well, Whenever there's a couple like that, I'm like, you lost a baby. Sure. Yeah. But it, it like, by the time that it's, I mean, they don't, they don't say the word sure. until like 30 minutes or 40 minutes into yeah. it. And so I thought that was nice. I thought that the house was very, um, it managed to be both beautiful and scary. Creepy. Yeah. Um, and so while they're there, it, it, the, the, the origins of the house were kind of a mystery because it, it was just the sort of well-appointed 
but yet yeah, not entirely undecrepit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it was even like, it didn't seem... There was a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> well, in the attic. <laughs> but the guy, the guy, the caretaker was sort of like, yeah, they just left it to, to the state or whatever. And it was very kind of... Hmm. I was really annoyed at him for getting so butthurt with her later because she was like what happened in this house like I feel like I'm seeing things I feel like you know like will you please let me know and then she was like I feel like you should have told us that and he was like how dare you yeah he was like you got a lot of nerve lady (laughs) whoa Whoa. (laughs) it was was sort of like I don't know get the ghosts out of the house and then I won't ask them any questions I'd also I'd be delighted to know if someone living in this house had murdered their child and then killed themselves I need that information. I honestly don't know how I feel because if I if I got that information, then I would absolutely manifest something. Mm. Whereas, mm. I mean, if a house is properly cleansed, sure. but I mean, we're going layers deep. Yeah, of course, yes. Both scientific and mystical. Well, so. it's just like, it's all well and good that you like, they they were planning to sleep in tents, by the way, and so then they were like, well, no, my wife and I, we'll clean this house for you, and it's there, and you can do whatever. And so it's all well and good to have that, but then it's like, the minute you start getting haunted, you're allowed to be a little fucking pissed about it. No, he really was, he, he, he was really trying to get it in, yeah. and it was like, although they, they said it had been a year, and but, so... I bought into all of it, and when they had their fight, and he was sort of like, like, I was largely kind of empathizing with him, yeah. but I don't love when people police other people's grief. Yeah. And it's especially the crying, the you're, you didn't cry, therefore, yeah. and it's a little bit sort of like, like, she maybe was dwelling, like, she had not gone through all five stages of, of grief, course. let's say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I found it to be I found it to be good. I found it to be um, enjoyable, atmospheric. I thought that Essie Davis was uh, she did She's a very good job. So good. I guess her and Jennifer Kent have a good yeah working mm-hmm. rapport. Uh, but basically, there's a ghost child in the house who's cold, and then there's uh, a woman who keeps screaming, "What did you do?" and flying through the air. Yeah, and they find out that the woman who or the the she was person whose house it was she was put there by her family and it didn't go well well i think i thought it was that the man had like bought the house for her but he was having an he was having an affair with her she was finding those love letters yeah so they like a married man was having an affair with this woman and she got pregnant and then he set them up in this house but then he would like he like stopped coming around and Mm. writing and stuff and so she went kind of bonkers and killed the boy mm-hmm. and then herself and that she was asking what did you do to herself well that was the reveal yeah. is that which again th- there was everything happening in the episode was kind of exactly what i thought was yeah. happening mm-hmm. but yet it was still satisfying to watch and I, and i think because we had it wasn't just the mystery of what's going on in the house it was how that was helping uh nancy through her yeah. Because she's able to find and comfort the ghost boy and con- explain to him what happened and convince him to move on. Yeah. And that's sort of a breaking point for her. And also uh, the the mother, because she kind of seems to forgive the mother. And It's honestly, it felt almost like they just needed to be like witnessed mm-hmm. in order to move forward. Because it was like once she... Once she like completed the cycle, having watched both of them, it was it was over. Mm-hmm. Well, was the like, birds cool. swoop yeah. through. Love it, and it like that was very moving. Yeah, and, and not unlike in in a good way, not like that final scene in the Babadook when it picks her up and shakes her and yeah. puts her back down. I really enjoyed that. Did you see? Have you seen the Babadook? Yeah, we okay. watched it I, together. We watched I it together. Like, yeah. Okay, I really enjoyed that. That's one of the ones I like. Some people don't like the blank as a metaphor for blank type style of horror, and. It can be overused, or it can be, it can get away from you, it can become pretentious yeah. easily, um, but I think when done well, I think it's very, it, it, I don't like, I said this earlier, but I don't like nihilism, or like, mm-hmm. horror for the sake of horror. Yeah, I like the hopefulness of this. So I like to this. give, I like to give yeah. reason, or, or, um. Also, I, let's just all assume that Edgar is getting gently laid the night after this happens. <laughs> 
but yeah, I, I found it to be very, very beautiful. And um, I, I found it to be the nicest of yeah. the eight, which is something that I think yeah. is necessary and desirable for an anthology series like this. It also wasn't disgusting, and it didn't have any tentacle monsters. <laughs> also, I think Guillermo, this is based on a Guillermo short story. Mm -hmm. So he has always, in my opinion, he has a a hopeful bent to his horror. Well, there, there was a dark there there was there was a real edge, real darkness to most of yeah. this. And as I've already mentioned, if I had a criticism, I think just the title alone, the Cabinet of Curiosities, there should be one or two elements of levity. It could be or a little whimsy. more whimsical, yeah. There could be one that was just sort of kooky or yeah. fantasy or you know and I feel like um like, Alice in Wonderland is an option here. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like the Dreams in the Witch House was supposed to be the kooky one. And it didn't really fly for me. <laughs> Jenkins Brown took any, <laughs> any element of that away from yeah. us. <laughs> no, I mean, overall, though, I did really like the show as a whole. I oh, love, yeah. I love like, an experimental thing like this. Like, more stuff like this, for sure. And, yeah, I dug it, overall. Yeah, I... I I'm certainly not mad I watched yeah, it. Yeah, no, 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 no. I hope they do more. I really enjoyed it. And like I said, that that's just my only critique is that every single one of them doesn't have to be mind-numbingly horrible. There yeah. can be, you know, there can be variation. Yeah. Um, just a little bit. Not a, not a ton, because then people are going to be like, what the fuck is this shit? Sure. But, um... We can have a no little over-under. Mm -hmm. We can have The Shape of Water. See? He's amazing! That's what this shirt is from. No, I understand, but I'm like, that that can rear its head in something like this. No, I totally agree. I think that's why I'm, I'm well, though Nightmare Alley was very nihilistic in a way that I was sh a little surprised about. It, like, it was one of the only movies I've seen of his that didn't end on, like, a hopeful mm. note, because, like, it, Pan's Labyrinth kind of has, like, a hopeful note. Crimson well, Peak is kind of hopeful. Shape of Water is kind of hopeful. The, the little girl dying and going to a fantasy world. Look, find your hope where you can get it. <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is that, like, most of his things are don't, like, end on a really dark, horrible, mm -hmm. dour note. And so I'm with you. I agree that I want a little more of the levity of it. Yeah. Just a skosh. So, um, all right. We had a great time. We hope yeah. you did, too. And hopefully we'll be back doing this next year. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Or in three years, because it's the, fuck the wild out? fucking yeah. west now. Um, or Netflix will have folded by then. So, bye! bye. <laughs> Way to end on a nihilistic note. <laughs>